My name is Kai, and I am part of Troop 56928. Not only am I a Girl Scout, I am also from an FTC robotics team, Acmatics, Team 16177. This is a video from a series of videos for the Girl Scout robotics badges, ranging from daisies to ambassadors. I hope you learn about robotics and enjoy. This is a video for girls to complete the Brownies Robotics Badge 1, Programming Robots. Here are the requirements. 1. Create a simple brain. 2. Test your robot senses. 3. Learn about programming. 4. Try simple programming. 5. Code a robot. You need to create a simple machine and test your robot senses. You also need to try and learn programming and code a robot. You will need to partner up with a friend, where your friend will act as a robot and you will make up a program to complete a task. Robots do different tasks because of programs. Without the programs, they are simple machines. Remember this for later. Programs are algorithms that have been coded into a machine. Algorithms are instructions on how to do a task. Sometimes there are things wrong with the code. This means the code needs to be fixed. Finding and fixing the problems in the code is called debugging. Before the robots are even made, there are prototypes made of them. Prototypes are models of the ideas you want to use to create your robot. These prototypes can be anything from a drawing to an actual thing. Now back to the simple machines. What are simple machines? Well, here, here are some examples. The wheel and axle works by turning the axle which causes the machine to move. The wheel and axle can be seen on wagons. The pulley is a cord that wraps around a wheel and raises and lowers objects. The pulley can be seen on flagpoles. The inclined plane is a flat san slanted surface that objects are pushed across. The inclined plane can be seen in ramps. The wedge is a pointed edge that pushes things apart. The wedge can be seen in axe blades. The screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a column. The screw can be turned so it moves through objects like wood. The lever is an arm that turns against a point. The lever can be seen in seesaws. Robots have senses like us to understand the world. Robots do this to complete tasks. Use your robot senses to understand your environment. Turn on the light, then off. Your eyes can tell you if the light is on or off. This is like a light sensor in a robot. Feel something warm, like a, like a cup of hot cocoa. Then feel something cold, like an ice cube. Your skin tells you if something is hot or cold. This is like a temperature sensor in a robot. When you run into an object and your foot hits something and tells you to stop, this is like a touch sensor. Programmers create instructions that are put into the robot so they can do tasks. They'll have a friend act as a robot. You'll be a programmer and create an algorithm for your robot. Create a program that has a friend draw and color an image without looking at it. These exact instructions are exactly what you need to learn how to program a robot. So I'm going to have my... Fellow scout, draw this image. So, uh, put your pen down to the paper. Move your pen down. Stop. Move your pen to your left. Stop. Move your pen up. Stop. Move your pen to the right. Stop. And as you can see, it came up with 
similar images. Now, you will also test it out by leading a friend, the robot, along the class to see how programmers make instructions for their robot. Have a friend act as a robot and make a maze using tape on the ground, then you have your robot put on a blindfold. Tell them the exact steps how to get through a maze. For instance, take three steps to the right and stop, then turn left. Go forward, stop, turn right, go forward, stop, turn left, go forward, stop, turn left, stop, turn right, and you reach the end of the maze. Now, complete an hour of code by going to code.org, a free website where you can learn more about programming. Ask your parents before going to, onto the website. This is what their website looks like. Thank you all for watching and give me feedback with the link below.